Hello and welcome to Good Business Pays Television, where we hear from leaders who are interested and have a view around the whole payments agenda. And today, of course, we're lucky to be joined by Liz Barkley, who's the UK Small Business Commissioner, who I talk to on a regular basis. Lovely to see you today, Liz. And Um, you, Terry. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so we're going to start today with a with a question I know I've asked you before, but maybe the viewers haven't heard, which is why on earth did you take the role of the small business commissioner? And uh, and when you arrived, is it what is it what you ex- expected? Um, I like the way you say, why on earth <laughs> did you take the role, Terry? As if you're prejudging to a certain extent what the answer might be. Um, I took the role because I really thought that I could improve things for small businesses. It's quite simple. I was born into a small business family with uh, the construction and the farming sector uh, and even a a great aunt who had a convenience store, a corner shop. Um, And I, before I went to university, worked for a small family run department store. Uh, So I've been steeped in the small business and it never occurred to me that in my career, I couldn't run my own business, that I couldn't be freelance. And so that's what I've done for most of my life. But I've also discovered in the course of doing that, that quite often you're really good at what you do, but not terribly good at running the business side of it. And so if you're not really careful, your cash flow suffers. And if your cash flow suffers, as you know only too well, that's when small businesses go to the wall. Um, So for me, getting paid is a fundamentally important part of that cash flow management. Uh, I hate the word journey, but from one end to the other, it is extremely important to be able to manage your cash flow. Otherwise, you have to borrow in order to pay your own bills, etc. And if you're borrowing, you're taking a huge chunk out of your income in order just to keep your business going. So for me, it was about trying to get big businesses to understand how small businesses work. And small businesses are not just big businesses, only small. Uh, If you are a CFO in a big business, the chances are you've never run your own small business and you don't know that 300 quid can be existential for that small business. And actually they need it to be paid by the end of the week and not by the end of the month or the end of the following month. So I thought that I could do a difference, uh, make a difference. And I am passionate about small businesses. Is it what I expected it to be? Well, I've I've been working in broadcasting for quite a long time. And I do know that if you don't keep saying the same things over and over and over again in the same way and you don't get those consistent messages out, it can take a heck of a long time to make the change that you want to see. Um, it took us 30 years to get seat belts. It took us 30 years to get smoking banned in public places you know, to get drink driving banned. So it takes a long, long time. And we're in that process. I perhaps didn't realise quite how much there was still to do. And what, you're 18 months or coming up to a couple of months? Nearly two years. Yeah. So And so how is that uh, 30-year challenge going after the first two years? How are you doing? (laughs) Um, Well, it's interesting. I think that certainly... We're talking about it an awful lot more now. And I don't think this is just because you and I talk as regularly as we do. But I think you've made a big difference. I hope that I've made a big difference because we are out there talking about it all the time. And our messages are fairly consistent. I think we are saying quite categorically to the big businesses, your small suppliers aren't going to be around if you don't pay them much quicker because they need to get the money in in order to upscale, uh, compete on the wages front, pay their bills, given that inflation's going through the roof, um, you know, pay the interest on any borrowing they have got, pay their business rates, pay their taxes. And those are the things that really worry small businesses. But if you're not, if, you, if you're having to wait 120 days to get paid, you're not going to be able to address any of those big concerns. If you go out of business, you're not there for the bigger guys when they need you. And it's harder than ever because the workforce is shrinking, because the skills are, there's a skills crisis. 
um, it's harder than ever to find the, the good supplier to replace a supplier who's gone to the wall. And I think that that's beginning to be much better understood. And who's getting it and who isn't in terms of that message? Well, in my experience in the last two years, some of the biggest businesses in the country are spending millions of pounds to get it right. And I think they're thinking about this as a really good way to do business. It's just the right thing to do, but it's a good way to do business. And, you know, good business does pay. It hits your bottom line if you're a bad payer because you're losing your suppliers, etc., and having to spend a lot of time and money and effort and so on to replace them. It, it helps your business case if your reputation for paying is really good because suppliers want to work with you. But it's stretching beyond that now, I think, it, to the point where investors want to invest in you. They don't want to invest with you if you're a bad payer. They're looking at what you're up to. They're looking at the data that is publicly available from the department, which is now called the Department for Business and Trade. They're looking at that data. They're looking at whether you're signed up to the prompt payment code, for instance, and they're saying to themselves, hmm, let's investigate this company more and see whether it would be a good investment for us. People, talented people want to work for the best companies. So there's a reputational thing driving this as well. Um, I think the pension funds have a big role to play in this. If they come along and say, we're not investing in your company because you don't treat your suppliers well, then, you know, you have to think about that as a and having an impact on your business. And so there's a, it's been talked about, but it's been, I think the big guys are really beginning to get it. Where we may have a problem is where there are companies where the boards don't get it, where the board isn't willing to agree to spend the money on improving practices and so on. You can't just go from paying your suppliers in 90 days to paying them in 30 days just like that. You have to put a lot of time and effort into it. And there's a lot of companies that do need to update their processes and their practices and their technology in order to get to that point. And that costs money. So the big guys, yes, I think they definitely are getting it and the value of it. But I think there's still companies that can't get the board. Uh, they haven't got the compelling case to the board to get the board to say, yes, let's spend it. And there's also a problem with small businesses not paying other small businesses fast enough, obviously, because they may be waiting themselves to get paid. Uh, and how you crack that nut is a very difficult question. You were talking about companies not being able to get their boards on board with fast payment. Um, but whose job is it to get the board on board? Is it an individual decision or a, a company decision? Who, who's responsible? Well, I think, Terry, you're probably better qualified to answer that question than me because you've done the research into the difference that leadership can make. And I think there's a lot of leadership, good, positive leadership required here. If you're a CEO uh, and you want to get your board to agree with you, that this is what needs to be done, then you've got to put that compelling case uh, to that board to get the vote on your side. Um, and we know that there are some amazing CEOs out there who've done just that. And they've made the case for millions being spent on updating technology and so on, so that payments can be made much quicker. So leadership has got a lot to add to this mix. Um, and also, I think you did some research that showed that sometimes the longer a CEO has been in the company and the longer the CFO has been in the company, the better they understand that company, the better they understand its needs and its supply chain and its suppliers. And there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for knowing your suppliers all the way down your supply chain. And, you know, once you know that, you're probably in a better place to make that compelling case and that compelling argument. Uh, in some companies that I uh, know and have worked with and have talked to, it comes from the CFO. A new CFO has come in and simply said, look, guys, this is not good enough. And if we aren't really careful, we are going to go in the way, <laughs> in the manner that other companies have gone before us uh, and go to the wall. We've got to get this sorted out. Convince the CEO, convince the board together. 
So it, it doesn't just start necessarily in one place. And I do think that we, you know, everybody has the capacity to be a leader. And if you see in your procurement department, in your approvals department, in your accounts payable department, that there's a real problem there brewing, you really need to get to grips with it and say so and show the leadership that says we've got to change things here. We've got to make these improvements because this business needs us to do that. There is leadership. It is about being brave enough to stand up and say, no, it, we can't go on like this. And most of the big companies, that's what's happened. Somebody new has come in, fresh pair of eyes, had a look, said we can't carry on like this. Um, or people who've been there for a long time have just realized uh, the importance of knowing what is going on with your small suppliers now talking about a fresh pair of eyes um one of the things that you've obviously done as a fresh pair of eyes on the regulations that were introduced i think back in 2017 around payment reporting um there's been a big review of those uh, going on this last few months which um which obviously you've been um heavily involved with and um I, and i just had a question around why you think those needed to change in the first place? Why was the review necessary? I don't think I can take credit for that though, Terry, because um, the actual reporting belongs to the department and it doesn't touch my office and the office of the Small Business Commissioner. But we do use that data. We do check if somebody wants to become a signatory to the prompt payment code and they're a big company, we check against the data to make sure that the data shows that they are meeting the the terms of the prompt payment code so we do use it um but overall the review is looking at um not specifically the data but at the payment and cash flow tools that the government has at its disposal in order to try to help to improve payment practices um, and the reporting, the data reporting is one of those tools. The prompt payment code is another one of those tools. My office is another one of those tools. And my team who help to resolve disputes between big and small businesses around payments, um, it, we are one of those government tools as well. But the reviewers are also looking at whether or not we need to improve the tools we've got and whether we need to add another raft of tools on there. So I see this as a huge opportunity. The consultation is closed now at the end of April. Um, the the people who are leading on the data and on the, sorry, on the consultation will present a list of recommendations to the Small Business Minister, to the Secretary of State. And then it will be down to ministers to decide what changes they think need to be made. Um, I think it's just a brilliant opportunity but also, I think it's really uh, put payments on the map again. We're talking about it so much more than, the we, than we were. Everybody's talking about it. Small businesses, big businesses, the technology companies are talking about it. Um, and the review is actually looking at, you know, the role that technology plays in payments and has paid, played in speeding up payments over the past 10 years. Um, what more can be done? Is the, is the more the technology companies can come up with that will help us to get into e-invoicing, for instance, because the rest of Europe is uh, pushing very hard towards e-invoicing. Um, and we, as businesses in this country, will find it harder to trade with those businesses in Europe unless we get with that programme as well. <clears throat> so there, you know, there is a lot of discussion going on with the technology companies as to what more they can do and what more they can help government uh, to push as well in terms of changes. So uh, everything's up for grabs. I have no idea what the outcome is going to be, no idea what my office is going to look like either. But all I can say is I just, um, I'm really pleased it's happened on in my term, and I'd love to be here at the end of it to carry on um, trying to improve things for the small businesses that, after all, as you know, make up 99 <laughs> 0.6% of business in the UK and are hugely important to the economy, to society, to the public good as well as, you know, societal good um, and are responsible for 50% of growth, 50% of jobs and 75% of innovation. Absolutely critical part of our economy. So um, I know that um, 
one of the aspects of the reporting of data that that people are unhappy with including ourselves at Good Business Pays is that it's all self-reported data um, and one of the recommendations that has come from Good Business Pays but also the Federation of Small Business and the Institute of Directors uh, has been that um, the the figures that go into the reporting should be part of the audit process somehow should be in a a big company's report or even in a company's house annual accounts for companies that aren't uh, big enough to be audited what's your view on this do you think this is a good a good a good suggestion a good idea uh terry you're saying it lots of others are saying it uh, many many organ more organizations that you've mentioned are saying it um i'm not the expert uh, i do think that uh, if all of those big organisations are talking about it, then there's got to be something in it, uh, certainly advantageous at some point. Um, I know that the team's looking at that. There has been a governance and audit review in the past, and I'm not sure that we've seen the end result of that. So that may feed into this as well. Um, I would not be surprised if there were changes. Um I suppose I'd be slightly disappointed if there weren't. And I think people uh, in the team know my view is we need to get this on the governance agenda. And a really good way to do that is to get it into the audit agenda. Hmm. And, and something that we talk about at Good Business Pays, and I know you do as well, is we talk about slow payment and late payment, slow and late. And um, unfortunately, we have to talk about both. Uh, some people like to talk about one or the other, but both are important. Is it in, in this balance of scales, how do you weigh these two together? Because some people say, oh, well, pay in 30 days, that's the ultimate prize. Others say just pay on time. What's your view on slow versus late? Well, I think when we're talking about late, what we mean is overdue invoices. So it was due on the 28th of April and it's now the 17th of May and it hasn't been paid. Um, that's late. Um, and I think it's possible to be paid slow, as in... Um, you've come to an agreement to be paid to accept payment in 60 days, 90 days, 120 days, and then be paid late on top of that. Um, the late payment issue is the one that we're trying to address in that we're trying to get people to pay on time so that small businesses have absolute certainty as to when the money's going to hit the bank account. Even if that is after 120 days, it's better than 120 days and then not knowing when the money is going to come. But on the cultural side of it, it would be much, much better if we could get big businesses to understand that small businesses actually can't wait 120 days to be paid. They can't wait 90, they can't wait 60. In fact, in a lot of cases, they're saying to us at the moment, given the cost of doing business, we can't even wait 30. Can you pay us more quickly? Um, and so it is about trying to drive that change in behavior uh, on the part of the big businesses that say, no, uh, we're offering you 60, 90 day, day payment terms, take it or leave it. Um, we need to see much more flexibility and much better negotiation between the two sides so that people really do get the money into their bank accounts as quickly as they possibly can. There's a velocity of cash argument here that says that if the cash goes from the big guy to the small guy quicker, the small guy is going to be able to do so much more with it in terms of upskilling their people uh, themselves, even of competing for wages and uh, on the labor market, of investing in equipment, investing in jobs, creating, innovating. Uh, and that's where a lot of the creation, job creation and innovation comes from, that small sector rather than the big sector. So there's a real argument for the public good, the social good and the, and the economy here in getting small businesses paid faster. And it's the will and the way again, isn't it? Where there's yes. a will and the way. <laughs> and and um, we're in the will area, of course, but the way, part of the way is technology. And I know that yes. you've got a strong views on perhaps what the, the review might bring out around the role of technology. Tell us about that. Well, I think, uh, as I said before, the uh, the most positive thing about this is is that the department's talking to the technology companies and saying, come on, guys, what can you do to help this process? Um, and e-invoicing is one of those possibilities. But, you know, we are seeing more and more small businesses 
uh, signing up to cloud accounting software, for instance, uh, which is great as long as their bigger customers actually accept and can deal with that technology. So we need um, we need, a, <laughs> I suppose, a more integrated technological system that will allow my technology to interoper interoperate with your technology so that we can get the flow of cash going much more quickly. Um, and I think the review is looking at the role of technology. And, but I think just as importantly, people are talking to the technology companies and saying, what more can you do? Because you have got the, the technology is probably all out there. It's a question of looking at how it's applied and how we can apply it better. And um, and what role do you see good business pays playing in this jigsaw puzzle of um, uh, you know that we're building around payments? What what do you see us doing together and working together on to achieve this mission that you're on? Well, I think we've not been doing a bad job in the last two years, have we? Um, and I think uh, you play a really really important role. There's only so much government can do. And I do think that good business pays is stepping into that bit that's not, that's beyond what government can do. And you're using the tools at your disposal to say, come on, guys, this isn't good enough. And that's a really important place to be. But what you're also doing, and I think you need to do, you can do more of, is saying, uh, you're really good at this. Can we share best practice? Can we actually? Can you now start to drive this down your own supply chain and say to the people working with you, you can do this too? And I think that's hugely important. Uh, keep it up. <laughs> that's all I can say. <laughs> You're making my job much easier. <laughs> well, I think um, just in closing, really, Liz, thanks for, for spending some time with us. I think that you should take credit for, uh, I know you didn't kick off the review, but as you said in, in our earlier discussion, people are talking about this area so much more than they were a couple of years ago. And much of that credit is down to you and creating that conversation and creating that change. So thank you on behalf of the small businesses of the UK. Uh, and, uh, and <laughs> I, think you're I, being much too, I think you're very much too kind, <laughs> Terry. Uh, uh, thank you for working with me on it. Mm -hmm.